Hello and welcome to the Studio 7 podcast with your hosts, Joshi Lee and Lucia Modernati. Okay. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Welcome back to another Studio 7 podcast episode. Whoop, whoop. Uh, this episode we're going to be, it's a, oh, it's a different one. Uh, we're going to try something new. Yeah. It's going to be uh, spread over uh, the period of the Oscars. Mm-hmm. Uh, so today we're going to go through our predictions. Yeah. So today is uh, Saturday, the 8th. Uh, so we're going to go over our predictions today. And then we're going to go watch the Oscars tomorrow, tomorrow night. Yeah, slash Monday morning. Slash Monday morning. Yeah. <laughs> and then on Monday, we're going to come in uh, and we're going to talk about whether we were right whether we were wrong, mm-hmm. uh, what we actually thought, talk about the the spectacles and yeah, a bit of the behind the scenes. And yeah, just yeah, an overall review. Yeah, um, and the whole ceremony in general. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, it should be a bit of fun, something different, something yeah, something new. I'm liking that about our uh, podcast so far. Is it's we're not sticking too much to a finite structure. We're no. kind of letting what's happening within the industry um, kind of dictate dictate what's, what's yeah 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 pretty fresh and different mm. to me anyway cool so and hopefully to you guys yeah that's the main <laughs> thing we're doing this for you you know we want you guys to be entertained and uh, learn as much about film as we are um yeah. and again thank you to everyone who keeps getting in touch yeah uh, leaving comments uh messaging uh yeah it means everything that's why we're doing it having conversations mm. open up um so yeah keep 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 them coming yeah keep getting involved also with this one as well you know feel free to mention who you thought was going to win or who you think should have won yeah and whether you agree or disagree with some of our um, Mm -hmm. predictions yeah okay so i'm just going to fire off with a bit of trivia to give you some background on the um, the awards so this year 2020 is the 92nd academy award ceremony so there are only eight off a century Mm -hmm. which is pretty incredible stuff i'm gonna i'm gonna put it out there right now i have uh, a dream goal I'm putting it out there to the world so everyone Ooh. knows. Uh, I want to be present at the 100th mm. Academy Awards. That's like... That's a good goal. That's like something, whether it's a, a nomination or whether it's literally just in the crowd or an invite or plus something. Plus one, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> like a plus one, I don't care. Like mm. That's like a yeah. staple, the 100th. That'd be monumental, yeah. yeah the 100th. Ooh, gets me excited just thinking yeah. about it. Yeah, not long to go. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so this 92nd Academy Award is going to take place um, this Monday for us, um, uh, which is the 10th of February at 1 a.m. Greenwich Mean Time. So uh, mm-hmm. if you're interested and you feel like you can uh, stay awake, yeah, uh, that's where you need to be. Uh, it's held at the Dolby Theatre in Los Angeles, California, mm-hmm. US this year. Um, this year, the Joker has the most nominations with a total of 11. Mad. Yeah. Um well deserved as well i think but just surprising that a mm-hmm. s- you know comic book movie could reach those heights yep. um the irishman 1917 and once upon a time in hollywood are joint second uh with 10 each mm. um so this year there's been 53 films in total that have received 124 nominations altogether yeah so that's like big year two point something noms each if you averaged it out mm. um Netflix has two films up for Best Picture this year, which we mentioned in an earlier episode, The Irishman and Marriage Story. But something that I overlooked was that they have more in other categories in nominations, Mm -hmm. such as uh, The Lighthouse for Best Cinematography and The Two Popes. Is that Netflix? Uh, No, it's not. No, it's the A24. No, I completely got that wrong. I was thinking of Uncut Gems. Yeah. Another A24 film. Okay, so A24. A24 have two films uh, <laughs> up for nominations. I was going to say, that's news to me. I was like, yeah. I've, I haven't, I've been able to watch it all this time. Yeah. Um, I hope it does come to Netflix. Yeah. That would be awesome. Um, but yeah, unfortunately not. So That's probably something else we should also say is that we haven't seen all of these films. Yeah. So this is uh, our predictions based on what we've seen. Yeah. And, and we, basically what we think other people might. Yeah. Um, and also, like... Uh, it's not because we haven't wanted to it's like with films like the lighthouse uh don't know where to go see this film uh it's in a few yeah. selected theaters same with parasite it pops up every now and then mm. you know in the worst time and <laughs> we can't go 
Uh, so we're just waiting for the perfect time. Well, and obviously Uncut Gems literally just, just came, came out. out on Netflix. Yeah. yeah, but it's been out. It came out in the states last year, yeah. end of last year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of some of these. Well, quite a few of these films that we mentioned that we haven't seen are because they've been released in the states last year and they're not coming out in the UK till this year. Mm-hmm. Um, which is common in the industry, but it's yeah. kind of annoying. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to award ceremonies. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Um. Most of the this is something that you mentioned as well the other day. The statuettes are only worth about a dollar. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, that's so funny. So yeah, um, they're yeah. actually uh, solid bronze, and then they're plated in twenty-four karat gold. Yeah. Um. So yeah. And they plate they plate them on the night as well. Really? Yeah. I don't know if you've seen. Um. It was quite a funny video actually. It was uh, when Leonardo DiCaprio was getting his. Yeah, I did actually. Yeah. yeah, yeah and then yeah, he's, yeah. Ba- he's backstage and he's mm. like eager to get it and he's there like, do you do this all the time? And, like even he's clueless. Mm. And then they're like, oh yeah, yeah. And he's there like waiting just mm. to grab the Oscar back it's and, quite a... and run home with it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> um. This is an interesting um fact. Apparently, uh, being a winner usually gets you an estimated increase of up to 20 percent on your salary so th- their next films after that they sign or sign on to they can expect an increase up to 20 yeah. percent i'm not saying all of them get that but maybe someone who's won best mm. um actor or best director yeah i'm sure a nom puts you up a little bit as well yeah that's a, that's still a staple yeah 100 <clears throat> percent um th- probably the most famous person to turn down an oscar was marlon brando for the godfather um yeah yeah i remember that um he actually instead he sent i don't think he was even at the oscar no he didn't he didn't go no he sent um, a native american Mm -hmm. apache girl to accept it for him and then explain the history of america (laughs) to america (laughs) yeah (laughs) i mean fair play like yeah i gotta give it to him i'm glad he did i mean it's it's only the same as like joaquin phoenix standing up at the baftas this year and talking about every single time he's won something he has said something brilliant yeah, yeah Yeah. I mean, th- this is the thing. I, I enjoyed uh, Ricky Gervais um, when he um, delivered the um, the awards uh, earlier this year. The Golden, uh, Golden Globes, Globes yeah. that's it, yeah. And um, he sort of was telling everybody, just pipe down, you know, don't start lecturing the audience. And I kind of agreed with him. You get it, but the thing is, yeah, he's doing it for a comedic relief. Mm. He's, he's basically saying, like, don't try and put yourself in other people's shoes that you don't understand. Like, don't yeah. even pretend that you understand them. Yeah. But the, but the sad thing truth is is that people listen to these people of influence Mm -hmm. so there's two sides to that story it's like yeah Yeah. they don't understand but if they tell you to do something or tell you to act in a certain way Mm. normally people follow suit yeah so when these people go away and Joaquin Phoenix is saying you know plant-based food is the way to go Mm -hmm. or um you know about um what did you recently say about um BAFTAs had well there was they were snubbed um uh, BAME actors black and ethnic minorities just didn't get yeah. any votes um, yeah yeah. Uh, yeah everything he's saying it's like you know yeah he may not have first hand experience in these things but he has a platform and he's using that platform mm. to you know give other people a voice mm-hmm. you know so you know it's a it's a two way thing yeah 100% but what I liked about Wacken Phoenix is in his speech he made it quite clear I'm not condescending to you I'm part of the problem which Was some other people forget to mention you know, and mm-hmm. it can come across as like they're just patronizing and talking down to us as if we don't know about these issues, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and I think most people do, but they put it to the back of their minds because of yeah. daily life. But then when they hear someone that they really admire or someone that they watch on the big screen talking about it, it like you say, it does make them sit up and mm-hmm. think, OK, maybe I should do something. So, yeah, there's that. Um, uh, Liza Minnelli is the only person to win an Oscar after both of her parents. So this is a family that have all won Oscars. No way. Yeah. Julie, Gar- Julie Garland in 1939, and then her father Vincent Minnelli in 1958, no and way. then obviously I think the youngest Liza person after. I think the youngest person to win an Oscar is like nine or something, right? That's my next point. Uh, is Tatum O'Neill for the film Paper Moon, and she was ten. Ten. Yeah. But she got nominated when she was nine, and then she won it when she was ten, right? Something Possibly, like that. yeah, yeah. That'd make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Mental. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Catherine Hepburn is the most Oscar-winning actress with four wins and twelve nominations. And finally, the Coppolas, so that's obviously Francis mm-hmm. and Sophia, the Fonders, you know, Jane Fonda, the Barrymores, including mm-hmm. Drew and that, and then the Afflecks, Casey and Ben, um, rank amongst the most one-slash-nominated families. Wow. Um, so that's pretty cool. Interesting. But yeah. So yeah, that's a bit of background on the Oscars, for those who didn't know and wanted to know. Mm-hmm. 
Um, Jump into noms. Yeah. Our thoughts. Let's do it. Uh, okay, so let's work our way up. Uh, so we'll start with best original score and work our way up to best picture. And the way we'll do it is we'll basically <coughs> say who we think uh, our vote would go to, like our vote, uh, who we think are probably guaranteed to win it by the the Academy standards mm-hmm. and their kind of choice. And then also possibly an honorary vote or maybe afterwards, um, you know, titles and films that we thought were snubbed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to go first? Best original score. Yeah. Uh, this one's gonna be so bland. It, I and I I can't say her last name. Mm-hmm. Uh, but <laughs> it, uh, Hilda, who was the done the original, um, composition for Joker. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I've got that down as well. Um. I think it's probably the one who's gonna win, and I think is the one that deserves to win the most. Hundred percent. Um. Well, she I had the most. Well, even I mean, I haven't looked into all the films again. Yeah. But it seems like she had the most influence on a lot of things that. Uh, well, a lot of things are um, added to the outcome of what happens in the film. Like, yeah. as we've mentioned before, the Joker scene in the, uh, after the first inciting incident, um, which kind of like projects him into um, this more violent lifestyle. Yeah. Um, when he's dancing in the in the public toilets, mm-hmm. that wasn't even written. They played her music and then they wrote it there. Yeah. They just they just the music inspired created, yeah, yeah yeah inspired and created the scene so yeah i think with her it, it, yeah i mean and the score anyway it's yeah gorgeous. and also it's so um incremental to the film you know i think mm-hmm. um you mentioned before about um todd phillips and uh joaquin phoenix mentioning that arthur fleck oh, who's music. a joker has yeah. music in him yeah and it's part of his character and that's how he expresses himself that's mm-hmm. how he shows emotion um and yeah, I think out of all the films that are out this year, m- this film music played the most intricate part in the story. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Directly yeah. affecting the plot and the characters' actions yeah. and emotions. Definitely. Uh, and on top of that, it was just a brilliant score. And then also on top of that, I think whoever was the um, uh, the music designer or whoever com- put the soundtracks mm-hmm. into the film as well deserves um, some sort of award or um, mm-hmm. nomination or mention. Um, Because the needle drops in Joker, I thought were really well done as well. You know, Mm. like with the dancing down the stairs to the Gary Glitter song, and which is obviously you know controversial. I can understand, but if it fits, it fits. If it works, it works. You know. Um, Comes back to the Michael Jackson thing. It's like, Mm. is it his music or is it him? It's like, can you separate the two, or do you just put two together? It's an interesting argument. Well, if you go, yeah, just a little tangent. If you go back through history, there's a lot of people who have done great things who might not actually be the best of people. Yeah, are you going to stop watching all the films that, um, you know, he who should not be named produced in Hollywood? Exactly. So well, yeah, that would be all of Quentin's early work exactly. gone. But, so you can't watch those anymore? Yeah. Like, you're not allowed? Yeah. So, no, it's it's different. Yeah. It's, it's some, yeah. I think we can appreciate the art without, <coughs> you know, honouring the artist, you mm-hmm. know? Um, yeah. So, yeah. A little nice one. Slide. Uh, I had a little honorary vote for that one. Yeah. Uh, which was Randy Newman for Marriage Story. Because I okay. thought that score was beyond gorgeous. And like mm. almost had its own dialogue to all the scenes and, and helped the, I don't know, just had this beautiful flow going all the way through and it just hit the right points at the right times. Nice. And it was like I noticed it but also didn't and it always yeah. just drove my emotions throughout the film. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was like a little thing. Yeah, good shout. More, the more that I think about it, yeah, it, it really, I think, Actually, it was so fitting that I didn't notice it because mm. now you're mentioning it. That's I'm trying I mean, to think back yeah. and it's hard. I can yeah. recall a couple of scenes yeah. and the score for it, but not all of it. And that's not something that I took away from the film. Yeah. But I think that was a good thing, actually, yeah. because this, the, the film was really about the characters and what they're going yeah. through. And you didn't want to detract or make, I just remember this, like, uh, make it too glossy. This, like, really light, blissful, almost like violin kind of like mm. coming in every now and then. It was just like, oh, so like soothing. But at the same time, there's all this horrible stuff going on. Yeah. Yeah, it was yeah, brilliant film. Nice. Moving up to cinematography? Yeah. Do you want to take this one away? Okay, so my prediction is that it's going to go to Roger Deakins for 1917. Is that your vote or what you think is just guaranteed? That's what I think is guaranteed. Um, mm-hmm. I've got an honourable mention that I'll mention later. 
because it's one I haven't seen yet. But from what I've seen of it, yeah, I, know what you're say I that. think it. <laughs> yeah. I can see why. And yeah. if the film is as good as I'm expecting it to be, I feel like it probably has been snubbed here in this mm-hmm. category. Yeah. Well, no, it's got a. Um, it does have a, well, a nomination I'm, for it. Actually, I, I haven't even seen the film that you're on about, and that has my vote. Yeah. Just from I've seen the behind the scenes. I've yeah. seen all the trailers that have been released on it and re- uh, release scenes and stuff yeah. and it's so I'll just say it now actually it's The Lighthouse um, mm-hmm. Robert Eggers new film who did The Witch mm-hmm. uh, which is another A24 film who we're yeah. big fans of um, yeah. and uh, yeah it's shot all in black and white and it's a, it's a period piece about two guys in a lighthouse who've yeah. got to guard it I haven't seen it I've seen clips of it I've seen trailers and it looks incredible mm-hmm. um, what what yeah. what what <laughs> and um yeah i mean shooting in black and white is hard to do well mm-hmm. um it's not as simple as just you know pasting over there's a an filter art there's an art to it there's a skill yeah. to it and the, the shots look gorgeous and it feels grimy and it feels like you are back in that time period mm-hmm. and you f- it f- yeah yeah so um yeah. if i was gonna give anything i'd probably give it to that mm-hmm. um yeah yeah but then like this this it's a different with all of them this is when it becomes difficult because with each film comes its own uh, creative process, comes its own challenges, yeah. and all this kind of stuff. So it's difficult because I mean, you, you know, you got because um, my an honorary vote of mine was uh, Lawrence Sher for Joker. Yeah. And when I've looked at all the behind the scenes and how he set up uh, for the camera and how he set up for yeah. the scenes and everything and and how him and Todd kind of mm-hmm. worked the camera in that film, that works perfect for that. And then when you go into the lighthouse, and obviously that's a very specific look, and then they've went and they've made, oh, it looks gorgeous. Yeah. And they've done a brilliant job with that. And But then you go back to 1917, and then they're trying to make it all one shot. And, yeah. you know, and then you've got all these other technical um, uh, uh, issues that kind of come in to, that you have to solve. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's difficult to judge. Yeah. But those three are like... Yeah. Uh, to be fair, I have mentioned Joker here as well. Uh, further on down um uh Lawrence Sher his mm-hmm. work he did he i mean you look at his background and it's actually incredible what he did with Joker um he did all the hangovers and a few other comedies like Due Date mm. and then um did War Dogs which is i guess a war comedy black comedy and then Godzilla uh 2 King of the Monsters really yeah and then went on to Joker and uh, he's actually shown a real um diversity to wow, his, um, I would not have put that together. Me neither. Um, I was really surprised. Um, but yeah, like we were saying, um, so Joker, was it shot on digital? And then they yeah. made it look like film yeah, after? Uh, so Ari, this is... An Ari 65 or something like that, or Ari 35 or something like that. Yeah, um, but you watch the film and it does have the aesthetic of a 1970s mm-hmm. crime drama thriller, like something that Scorsese would have done, um, yeah. like Taxi Driver or um, yeah. something along those lines, or Mean Streets. Um, so... And it also it, it had it yeah it brought you yeah. back to that period setting. Replicated film very very well. Replicated film very well, and also it had a grunginess that made you feel almost you know mm-hmm. uncomfortable and scummy and and dirty and mm-hmm. you know made you relate even more to what uh, Arthur Fleck was going through and how he was feeling, being like you know this dreg on society or being m- made to feel that way. Yeah. So yeah, that's a good shout there. Were they all yours as well? Those three. Yeah, so I had Joker, I think, is... Uh, sorry, 1917 was uh, who I thought it was going to go yeah, to. Same, yeah. And then I had The Lighthouse and as Joker vote, yeah. as as my votes, yeah. Nice. Moving on to Best Sport Actor and Actress. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Let's go with Actress. Yeah. Uh, my vote, 100%, is Laura Dern for yeah. Marriage Story. Yeah, same. I I really wanted to win it. Mm. Uh, I was watching a scene the other day uh, in the oh, you, you've seen it as well, the courtroom. Mm-hmm. Um, just these little like um, I don't know, just the, some stuff that she brings to the scene. It was so commanding, and she could go toe to toe with what's the actor's name? I forgot his name. Ray Liotta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And mm. they, she was standing her ground and mm-hmm. I'd loved the, I'd, the whole dynamic of that scene was amazing. Mm. Everything she said, she said with her chest. Yeah. Which is perfect as well for a character being a, a defense lawyer. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, um, and just like little things that like um, uh, Noah Bumbach, who's the writer and director, was saying that like, wasn't even in the script. Like she'd start taking off her jacket, 
mm-hmm. like you know taking off the gloves ready for a you know bare knuckle fight almost yeah um but yeah you, you know when when you got like uh actors of that talent you do just want to let them go mm. you just want to go all right here's your character uh this is your backstory this is the scenario mm-hmm. play around and yeah. like this is the frame this is your playground like yeah you know everything here is is for you you know yeah. get used to your props get used to this this, yeah. is, all yours. this is your sandbox yeah. you know go crazy yeah um and, and she did it she did yeah yeah and i'm so glad I, i've always um been a fan of her mm-hmm. uh since dress it park um yeah, obviously same. one of the first films i ever watched and watched too many times yeah um and yeah kind of missed her in cinema for a good good while good while but now she's making a return and i'm gladly so mm-hmm. and yeah so yeah mine was the same best supporting actress laura dern marriage story yeah a real standout yeah but who do you think they got down to win this is this is a stretch because uh, I, I think i put yeah. i put i put um uh this actress down because they're pushing her a lot recently yeah and i think think they'll give it to her as like cement the foundation basically right and then they're gonna push her on that's florence Pugh. yeah have you got it down as well no no i i put it down in that i think laura durham will win and i think that's because i just hope she I wants think, to win i think she'll, I, yeah but i know what you're saying and i do I th- think that I think there is a win. very big chance that florence Pugh yeah. could get it but if she does i haven't seen marriage um sorry little women mm-hmm. so i can't actually say I have yeah, seen another no. film that came out last year that is on my honourable mentions for something else that she's in. Mm-hmm. Um, but even her performance in that, while good, was nowhere near. Yeah. Um, well, it's the same with Little Women, level. actually. It's like there was great talents in that film. Mm-hmm. And she I, just wasn't one of the standouts to me. She was brilliant as her, sorry, as her character. Yeah. Um, but yeah she was swarmed by uh other great actors yeah. so it was, you know it was i do i have got an honorable mention if it didn't go to laura dern i was going to suggest um tony collette in knives out uh which i, I only saw that. recently mm. um and i'm glad i managed to squeeze it in and she really does is a star in that she really does stand out yeah. um and again like laura Dor- dern she's been kind of quiet in Hollywood for a little mm-hmm. while and she's made a resurgence over the past few years with hereditary and stuff mm-hmm. um so yeah but I do think you're right that there is a big chance it could go to Florence Pugh which I'll be upset about because it would be purely political rather than yeah des- well that's why deserving. I checked it in there because because mm. she is being backed a lot recently yeah um and they do this a lot it happened with um Jennifer Lawrence mm-hmm. um they done it for a little while with Margot Robbie and arguably still doing it with Margot Robbie. But as we mentioned in the previous review with um, Birds of Prey, Birds of Prey, yeah, uh, we've said that you know, respectedly, she's built her own foundation now. It's almost like she was like, yeah, thanks for the leg up. Now yeah. I'm gonna go do my own thing. Yeah, uh, like registered uh, producer um, as a producer in the Producers Guild of America, like yeah. You know she's making her own waves yeah um but yeah i just feel like that i just thought i'd chuck it in because I, f- I feel like that is a possibility yeah um i feel you're right yeah for better or worse we'll mm. see how that goes but yeah, i mean it's not to, yeah laura dern we'll, li- we'll leave it there mm-hmm. um best supporting actor yes <laughs> mine's one guy <laughs> yours is one guy yeah well you don't have any other no yeah, I think Al Pacino. Al Pacino as well. Yeah. Yeah. Irishman. It's such a uh, Wait, let me let me get up. Let me get up this category cuz I I remember looking at it and I wasn't Isn't uh, Joe Pesci in there as well? Yes. There's two from Irishman, yeah. Yes. Uh I haven't seen Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. It looks brilliant. I haven't seen Two Popes. Uh I've wanted no. to. Yeah. Um from what I've seen in the trailers uh is very uh character heavy dialogue heavy in the two popes yeah so i'm sure there are going to be some powerful uh some you know some of these scenes where they're gonna have a great delivery 100 percent. um but yeah but out of the ones that i've seen i mean brad pitt like it was great he was a fun character but there was nothing to be massively added mm. um joe pesci he was like 
I'm being as blunt Joe as possible. Pesci. Is Joe Pesci is Joe Pesci. He was, yeah. he was like the old guy in, in the chair the whole film. That's literally yeah. what it was. He was like the godfather in the chair. Like, yeah. you, there's not much that he did. Mm. It was, you know, standard delivery. But Al Pacino, there was like, r- out of all of them that I've seen, mm-hmm. there was like range there. That mm-hmm. It went from, you know, all these different settings and locations and he had a proper arc. Mm-hmm. Um, where you'd see his nice side, his mean side. Yeah. You know? uh, you'd go to jail with him. You'd go to the best place with him. You see yeah. his family. He'd go off with other people's families. Like, yeah. Uh, I feel like there he, was, he'd shown a good range. There was one standout scene for me from him in in that film, The Irishman by Al Pacino, and it was um, when they set up a meeting with him and the other gangster, played by Stephen Graham, I think, who was in This Is England. Mm. And yes. he turns up like Such. late, and then they have this argument about well, they, what's too late. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and he's yeah, yeah. like, 15 minutes, that's too late. And he's like, mm, no, I think 10 minutes. Yeah. And he's like, mm, no, 15 minutes. And then, like, he <laughs> says to like Robert De Niro's character, what do you think? And he goes, mm, 12 and a half, split the difference. He's like, yeah, beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> Such a good scene. And um, yeah, it showed because. And the continuation in, with the ice cream in the prison as well. Yes. That's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, Al Pacino. Like, yeah, but again, I haven't seen Tom Hanks, and he seems lovable in in A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. Yeah. Um, but again, in the trailers, there's uh, it's not much range. He just seems like this positive figure, which the the guy was. So, um, but yeah, we'll have to watch him. And yeah. See. So that's best supporting actor, Al Pacino, The Irishman. Mhm. So far, we've been spot on, haven't we? So almost yeah yeah Hilda for Joker's best score mm-hmm. uh, Roger Deakins for 1917 best cinematographer uh, Marriage Story Laura Dern best supporting actress uh, oh Irishman. we didn't we didn't say the cinematographer's name for the lighthouse it's uh oh no we didn't Jaren uh, Jaren Blask 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 I'll let you uh, Blask we'll go with that murdering it Blask forgive us yeah, yeah. um but yeah, the DP of the lighthouse. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I've got a feeling. Um, ah, what do you want to do next? Because I feel this is where we might diverge a little bit. Uh, we can do screenplay. Okay. Yeah. Adapted or original? <laughs> Ooh, let's go adapted first. Okay. Uh, so m- my oh. See, now I'm reading this, and I'm actually going back on what I said. Uh, I'll just go what I put down. This was my feelings the other day. Mm-hmm. Um, so my vote is down as Todd Phillips and Scott Silver for Joker. Okay, yeah. Uh, only because I feel like they've taken that in such a unique way, and especially with the way that superhero films are now. It was nice and refreshing. Mm-hmm. It was something that needed to be said about society. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I think that was the best thing to come out and do with the Joker character in a whole. Yeah. Um, so yeah, massive pat on the back to them. Yeah. Um, but now going back, I'm kind of stuck between who I put as my, who will win is Little Women, uh, Greta Gerwig. Mm. Um, I watched the film uh, not long ago and it was brilliant. Uh, it's It gets his message across. Yeah. Um, there's nothing about it that there's there's nothing bad, but there's nothing that's outstanding either. Yeah. But the one thing that is great is you can tell that there's a lot of passion in the script. Um, but then I feel like uh, Greta's directing didn't quite come through as much in this one as it did with Lady Bird. Um, that could have been because of the uh, the period setting. Um, you know it's uh when it comes down to these kind of things sometimes it is a little bit difficult to shoot in a certain way Mm -hmm. and she was trying to shoot on film Mm. large format so sometimes it can just look a little bit flat right um but it felt more like uh well 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 written blocking Mm -hmm. rather than on set uh what works direction Yeah, yeah what works in this space right now yeah it was more like Oh, it's in the script for you mm. to be sat there and you to be here and yeah. do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel that could be the problem with adapting works from books is especially something so prestigious as like Little Women is like mm. they feel like they have to keep it so close to the source material. It restricts them sometimes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I haven't seen it so I can't really comment. Um, 
from what I have seen of it, I saw a little clip the other day between Timothy Chalamet and yeah. Saoirse Ronan. Yeah, they're brilliant. They are so they steal the film. Really good. Really yeah, good yeah. scene. Um uh so yeah. I have put so this is for um best adapted screenplay. Mm-hmm. I've put I feel like it might go to Jojo Rabbit. Um It's been happening a lot. Taika Waititi's mm-hmm. um latest film. I haven't film. seen it. I haven't seen it either. So I you know can't judge. <laughs> I can't really judge, but I feel out of all the ones listed in the norms um it's sort of hitting on the right um the- thematical notes mm-hmm. about you know uh, world war Two and the holocaust and things like that but doing it in a a f- re sort of reinventing almost the the genre by making it this sort of like um uh fictional tale of a true life story where mm-hmm. there's this um make believe character in this boy's head and and so they turned it into sort of a, like a black comedy. Mm-hmm. Um, I've put that down because I don't feel like it's going to pick up any other ones, but I feel like they're going to want to give it something to honour the film. And, I mean, it's got a great cast. There's like Scarlett Johansson. Um, who's yeah. the uh, tall English actor? Stephen. She's nominated for two, isn't she, Scarlett? Yeah, she's got Best Actress and Best Supporting Actress. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I did consider putting her down for... Uh, uh, best actress. Well, she was, but it changed ever so slightly. Best supporting. You mean? No, for best actress. Yeah. Really. Yeah. That's interesting. Mm. Good Originally, but I've changed it. I changed it. Okay. Um. So yeah, but yeah, I did think that she might get best supporting for Jojo Rabbit as well. But after seeing Marriage Story, <laughs> yeah. Lorna Dern's got to win it for me. Mm-hmm. And I do think that they will, they could honor her because she's been in Hollywood for so long and contributed so much, and now she's having her time again. Mm-hmm feel like they might whereas like obviously people like Scarlett Johansson have got quite a few more years in her they feel like they can hold off maybe a bit longer mm-hmm. uh, so yeah so best adapted screenplay I've put down Jojo Rabbit however now this is a film that I feel has been shafted I was lucky enough to see it recently squeeze it in uh, Dark Waters is based on um, has it got a nomination? no it's been it's been like shafted these awards okay, um snapped. yeah and i'm not sure why maybe it's because it's had such a late release uh it's already out in the states so i'm not sure it comes out here in a couple of weeks um and it's adapted from a newspaper uh, article or it was a series of them and then they were like mm. compiled after yeah. called um the lawyer who became dupont's worst nightmare um, and basically it's a true story it's about a lawyer who uncovered um a big conspiracy in a small town of dupont in West mm-hmm. Virginia um, and yeah it obviously it's a true tale so a lot of the stuff is stuff that's actually happened so they couldn't stray away too far but the way they've managed to um, adapt it is very concise and digestible so if you have no idea about this or how the inner workings of big corporations yeah. and stuff they display it in a way where you can actually digest get the grips of it and digest it yeah so uh, that would be my nomination nice. but i think it'll be jojo rabbit but I've now you said little women i'm thinking it's probably going to go to little women yeah mm-hmm. um and then i put down as an honorary vote for the irishman i think it, again mm-hmm. the irishman if that's going to go away with anything it's going to probably be the the screenplay mm. um that was something that kind of stood out to me mm. uh, as well so yeah that's a good shout yeah but yeah on to uh original screenplay yeah uh, my vote goes to Marriage Story with Noah Baumbach. Mm, yeah. Uh, the more I'm looking into this film, the more I'm loving it. Mm. Um, there's just, uh, a, a lot that you can quite easily glance over. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, um, I just, th- yeah, I mean, I've been watching some of his scene breakdowns and, um, hearing some of the actors and actresses going over uh, the script and what they thought, and it just sounds like, and watching the film, like you know, yeah. Um, I say that's a really strong choice. What did you have? I think I know. Yeah. <laughs> See now, this is what I think is going to get it. Um, I think it's going to be Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, guaranteed, for Quentin Tarantino. I can guarantee that that's going to win it. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah, your argument for it 
it's kind of what helped convince me in that um, it's about time for him mm-hmm. to win something like this. And now that he's... It's a nice send-off for him. Send him, yeah, send-off. Yeah. Apparently, because he's saying that this is, well, one more film and then he's done. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is his love letter to Hollywood. Yeah, so and the awards Academy love films about the Academy <laughs> mm-hmm. or the industry. Yeah. Um, it's got Hollywood in the title. Yeah, he is blowing a big fat kiss to Hollywood throughout the entire film. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think they're saving it up. I mean, I don't know if you've seen uh, his reaction when um, Bong Joon Ho won. Or best original screenplay no. the BAFTAs it is so funny man they kept cutting to Quinton and he just had the like the biggest bulldog face Jeez. <laughs> he was not happy not even a clap nothing just a big frown yeah like almost he was promised to win it like mm. that's the kind of face that he was pulling mm. so yeah I think if there is any kind of communication between awards uh, and the campaigns and all this kind of stuff all the stuff that goes on behind the scenes that mm. even we don't know about yeah um yeah i think this is going to be the one they're going to be like there you go thanks for waiting there's your big one there's your send off now go do your last like kill bill three or something yeah which you're not going to get nominated for yeah thank but you we very can much. give you a nom yeah. for this yeah. thank you very much yeah. here's your award basically this is going to be like his honorary award yeah before for his, his honorary for, award <laughs> yeah for his career basically yeah. that's what i mm. feel like yeah um but yeah, I, I thought mm. you were going to say something else or are you still yet to say something else? I am going to say who I think should have been nominated and should win. Oh, and I thought, won't. I thought you were going to uh, go with Knives Out. No. No? No. Um, it's a good film. Yeah. I feel... I watched it a lot later, obviously, than everybody else. Because mm-hmm. it came in cinemas like last year, November time, I think. Mm-hmm. I've only just watched it. And it's really good. It's really well written. But it felt overhyped to me, as in like there are a few genuine twists and turns, but some of it you can predict, and some of it you're like, oh, it's a twist for a twist sake. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, you're just trying too hard now to um, outsmart us. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was nominated, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah no, I think it's. Gl- I'm glad that it's been nominated. Um, I'd rather it win than um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. If I'm honest, well, but it'd, be, it'd be pretty sweet if uh, if Noah Bomback won it for original, and then Greta Gerwig won it for adapted. Because uh, they're a couple. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be cute. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that would be. Both get a nod to their writing. And I, then... I've got uh, this. Uh, I put in uncut gems. I think they should be should have had a nomination, um, mm-hmm. and massively shafted. Possibly, I mean, maybe not win it. Like Marriage Story is very very good um but yeah i so clever uh the way it's written and way it constantly builds up i described it as like a pressure cooker on film and i think that is the best analogy for it like literally uncut gems yeah uncut yeah. gems you're literally like oh, from the get-go from the opening sequence the, yeah. the way is, the scenes yeah. the dialogue and then the yeah. music over the top is so unsettling yeah this isn't going to sell it but it gave me a headache yeah <laughs> but <laughs> like, in a good way yeah it's in a like good way. a good yeah. headache if that's possible yeah um yeah just so cleverly written and like now that i look back on it and like the ending is kind of shocking mm-hmm. but it's like that had to be the ending of course Do there's you know what no I mean? other way there's no other way that yeah. film could have ended from what i they... love how the uh the safety brothers who are the um josh and benny safety who are the writers and directors mm. um i love how they explain uh howard the the lead actor they say he's um he's not a loser He's a winner, but never wins, Mm. which I thought was a really interesting way Mm -hmm. of going around it, because obviously we're talking about him. He's constantly in a winner's mindset. Yes. Uh, He probably has won big in the past. Yeah. And now he's just waiting for that next big win. Yeah. And he's constantly making all these stupid risks Mm -hmm. that you're just you want to be there on his shoulder, like being the Mm. little angel and devil being like, Mm. well, you will be screaming at the TV. I mean, like I was literally like. Yeah, oh, I, I span around. Co- yeah, yeah, like, I span around a few why? times. Come yeah, on. Like, yeah, um, yeah, massively shafted. Yeah. And apparently there was uh something ridiculous over a hundred plus um 
script edits. Yes. Yeah. So surprised. I mean, like, I, I put this in my list before talking to you yesterday, and you revealed some things about it which made me think, yeah, even more. I'm glad I, mm-hmm. I put that down. Yeah, they, they've been writing mention. it or trying to make it for over 10 years. Mm-hmm. Uh, from day one, they had um, Adam Sandler, mm-hmm. the Sandman attached. <laughs> well, not attached. They wanted him, and they wrote it to him. Mm-hmm. And apparently, he kept getting it to, they kept getting it to Adam's agent, and he just kept turning it away, being like, no, no, he doesn't do these movies. He's not going to do this movie. Mm-hmm. And then until obviously they went and proved themselves with good time. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, okay, cool, let's talk. Mm. And then uh, they went to his office. Mm. And that's interesting because just on a side tangent, good time feels like the proof of concept for Uncut Gems. Completely different storylines, but similar themes. And it has that building uh, pressure Mm. um, set up. I really like the look of their films. It's not something Mm. that I would ever choose to do, Mm. but you can see how it... uh, works effectively to what how the emotions that they draw out of their audience mm-hmm. there's one before it i don't know what it's called but uh, i've seen the trailer recently and I'm, I'm looking forward to watching it um they made it in like 2016 or something and it's about uh, a girl on the streets who's a drug addict yeah and the whole thing is just about her getting ridiculously high and you can imagine their filmmaking mm. with a with a damaged girl like that how deep they're gonna make you go yeah um but yeah even the trailer i was like you know treating my head into my chest like mm. oh no mm. they're um, really good at like touching on people's uh, anxiety, anxiety and, and like yeah mm-hmm. really oh, clever fears yeah yeah really interesting filmmakers cool so that was best original screenplay go back to best actor back to best actress yeah uh so for best actor i think we both probably got the same one down we've already mentioned him uh, mm-hmm. joaquin phoenix yeah uh that's my vote and i think they're gonna choose him i think he will win it yeah i'd say the same Mm -hmm. i think um i think he'll win and yeah that's who i want to win yeah and then my (coughs) honorary vote who would also be nice if he could win would Mm. be adam driver um for marriage story mm -hmm. yeah 100 percent. especially that one scene when he yeah (laughs) yeah Especially in that one scene where he breaks down, they have that argument. Yeah. It is horrifying. When it's at his place after mm. he's moved out. Yeah. It is horrifying. That was the rawest bit of the film for me. Yeah. Um, and it felt so real and so true. And mm-hmm. I, yeah. So relatable. Yeah. Um, not just, I mean, obviously I haven't been married, <laughs> so I can't relate <laughs> from that sense. But just being in a relationship. It, what I feel like about the film is it's called Marriage Story, but it could be called Relationship Story. Mm-hmm. It's just about modern day relationships. Like, how does it work nowadays where it's not the old, you know, pre 1950s setup of, you know, the guy goes out and work, the woman stays at home, looks after the kids, and yeah. does it. it's not that anymore. Mm-hmm. And this is what I think the film touched on a lot is that what do you have when both people are equals and want careers and deserve to have their own. Yeah, um, unfortunately, someone has to be put on top. Exactly. Which then becomes the breaking point because yeah. it doesn't matter how you feel at the beginning saying, I 100% believe in what you're doing and I'm going to back you. There is yeah. going to be a point in their life where they're going to turn around and go, well, what about me? Yeah, 100%. And, mm. you know, that is, you know, is, is a difficult situation. Um, but yeah, that, that breakdown scene where they were going off each other was, yeah, heart-wrenching. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that was my honourable mention as well. I also had Mark Ruffalo for Dark Waters. It's just a yeah, really... Snubbed. Yeah, I mean, they just snubbed the film completely for whatever reason. I, not to get too political, but I think it's because <laughs> of the subject matter because they're literally pointing... Fi- I mean, it's a true story. They're talking about a real company, the mm-hmm. DuPont um, chemical company. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think they were like, oof, this might be a bit too yeah. close on the nose. And <laughs> also, Spotlight uh, won quite a few awards a couple of years back, which is very similar film. And Mark Ruffalo was also in that and he's not a lead in that one but he plays a similar sort of role mm-hmm. so maybe it was just too similar for them yeah. um there could be a few reasons there could be a few reasons yeah um so yeah that's that <laughs> best actress i just got one name and it's scarlett Johansson for marriage story yeah yeah um she was who i think should win but I think they might give it to uh, Renee Zellweger for Judy. Again, because it's a film about the industry and because she went through... A, I haven't seen it, no. Um, I've seen bit uh, clips and trailers, obviously, and behind the scenes. Um, 
I think they might give it to her because it's obviously about the actress Judy Garland. It's obviously about the industry. And Judy Garland's obviously the lady who I mentioned in the trivia who um uh, who whose family have all won an award. So Judy Garland's mm. the mum, Vincent Minnelli. So it's close to home. It's close to home. Uh, okay, so that I makes think sense. they might give it to her for that, but I agree with you. Scarlett Johansson smashed it. Yeah. Uh, what I loved about Marriage Story is both Adam Driver and Scarlett Johansson, I didn't see them as Adam Driver and Scarlett Johansson. I saw them no. as their characters, literally. Yeah. I didn't think of fucking, uh, excuse my language. <laughs> I didn't think of uh, <laughs> Kylo Ren or Ben Solo. I thought of, I've forgotten his name, but the, the his character in Marriage Story, that's who I was seeing the whole time. Mm-hmm. And, and the same with like um, Scarlett Johansson, you're not there going, oh, this is Black Widow or, no. or anything like that. It's just, yeah, this is... You know, you literally feel like you're intruding in their life almost. Mm-hmm. Um, but then yeah. again, it feels like, you know, uh, as is it relatable to a lot of people, like, you know, when you go into these, uh, when it drops you in, you feel like you're intruding. But at the same time, it's like drawing into like, oh, you've experienced like this in some kind of way. Yeah. And you're there like feeling for them and you don't know who to side for. And you realize there is no one to side for. No. It's the kid <laughs> it's, it's a like kid. yeah you're supposed to be doing it for the kid yeah. but it's never about the kid yeah you know um yeah. which this film got across perfectly yeah. i think and i hope um left an impression on people mm-hmm. uh, same way with the joker um yeah uh another one in that category is Saoirse Ronan. Mm-hmm. um again uh, there wasn't a lot for her to work with yeah um that doesn't really show much range okay um but she just glowed on the yeah. screen uh when she was like with her fam every scene when she was with her family her sisters her mom yeah uh there were a few emotional um uh tear jerking scenes mm-hmm. but nothing on the caliber of marriage story or yeah or anything like that yeah. um but yeah she just every scene she stole it uh, do you know what? She's a great actress. Um, she was. Was she in Hannah? Yes. She was, wasn't she? Yes. Great film. Her and Eric Banner act mm-hmm. were acting uh, chops off in that film. Just on a side note, she will get it. She'll get it one day. Yeah. Oh yeah. They they're definitely keeping a close eye on her. Um, mm-hmm. And also, I was watching last night. Funnily enough, uh, Jamie Oliver and uh, the other chef, and they've got that show where they've got like a little restaurant on the pier, and they mm-hmm. get like celebrities to come in, and she was on it. And she seems like literally, genuinely one of the nicest people. Mm. So down to earth, but well spoken, but mm. still funny. Yeah. Um, and you know, uh, gentle, uh, but like with a little edge. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I was, I was blown away. I was like, I want to be friends with you. <laughs> do you know what <laughs> I mean? So, um, yeah, I think she does deserve it, and I'm looking forward to the day when she does. Could be for this. I'm sure she's got better performances in her mm-hmm. which oh, might be more deserving yeah 100 uh, percent. but we'll see yeah so that was best actress uh best director yeah this is a weird one yeah um uh, yeah because this is something i'm looking at now and i'm like i don't know i don't know if i want to have that as my vote hmm. i'd love to be able to say bong joon ho but mm-hmm. I haven't seen the film mm. and from what I have seen and what I've heard people say and critics have been saying and the whole world is raving about mm. Parasite should just sweep <laughs> yeah uh, it's the high it's got the most nominations and awards out of all yeah. of the films it's got um, it's the most highly rated it's the most highly rated it's on like 99% like everything yeah. yeah literally everything it's higher mm-hmm. um, I just I'm so buzzing to see what this film before we set this up and started doing this podcast i was watching um a little clip on instagram and it was like loads of actors from this is done and like on the red carpet and loads of them saying who they think should win uh the oscar for best picture and it's like taika watiti and other famous people and they're all saying parasites so if it's as good as people are talking and hyping it up to be yeah. it should probably be the winner um it's not who i put I feel like I can with with like best picture and best director. I feel like you have to have seen it really to fu- you know to finite. That's say. what I mean. I'd love to be able to uh, yeah say in best picture this is going to be Parasite yeah and director is going to be Bong Joon Ho. Mm. He's one hundred percent taking the foreign film. Yeah, excuse me. Yeah, one hundred percent taking the best uh, foreign picture home. 
It's just guaranteed. Guaranteed. Yeah. <laughs> if he doesn't, it's doesn't a even steal. need to turn up, does he? But I think I think <laughs> if if he doesn't, he should just sit back and start drinking and celebrating because he knows for a fact that he's taken away best picture. Yeah. Like if he if they don't give it to him there, mm. then definitely give it, it to him there. there. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, cool. Uh, I've put, I think, I put Sam Mendes, I and, put and it's probably yeah. the safe choice. I put Sam Mendes as who will win. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's a safe choice on all parts, for, from the academy, from me, from the public. Mm-hmm. Um, but however, I've got to say he does deserve credit for just the logist the logistics of putting together 1917 mm-hmm. and being able to oversee and manage all that and turning out the final film that he did yeah that's a lot of skill mm-hmm. um 100 so i've got to give him credit there where credit's due yeah uh, and obviously he wrote it as well i think with the writing partner and it's based on um stories that his or granddad stats. his granddad yeah, yeah albert m hughes i think uh, albert m mendez i think that's right um yeah so yeah, um, I also put down which I've changed my mind about, <laughs> but only because I think having a nod, and I'm glad that he's got the nomination. That's Todd Phillips. Yes. Uh, I'm glad that he's got the nomination, but I don't. Looking back, I don't think he's gonna win. I don't think I he'll don't, win. I don't mm. think he, in the nicest way possible, should win. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think there are other outstanding uh, directors that have uh, that had films out this year. Yeah, um, and who have had been c- more consistently good, yes, project on project. Whereas with Todd Phillips, we're only now just seeing how skillful what he, he can, can be. Mm-hmm. Um, everything before you wouldn't even, you know, associate with the Academy Awards. Mm-hmm. So, I feel like they're going to see it as okay, cool. Now you stepped up a level. You're on our on our game um, play now. But let's see how you continue. Are yeah, you going to keep you, doing films yeah. like this, or are you going to go back to doing Hangover Part now? Three? Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, how can you navigate these waters exactly? Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so I'd put it with Bong Jun Ho or Sam Mendes. Yeah, um, I just put Sam Mendes. Um, I haven't seen Bung, uh, Parasites yet, but if I did, I would want to put uh, mm. Bong Jun Ho definitely. Um, not even just for that, but for some of his past work, <laughs> yes. you know, uh, uh-huh. you could argue that he on par if not better than all of these directors just on his past work alone mm-hmm. let alone Parasite yeah. so yeah. yeah there's not well of what I've seen there isn't a flawed film film yeah, yeah. same yeah Whew. yeah all right. heavy stuff yeah this is the big one drum roll <laughs> best picture oh, I'm in the same boat again yeah <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I don't know um wait let me let me get up the 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 official ones so they had the nominations are ford versus ferrari the irishman jojo rabbit joker little women marriage story 1917 uh once upon a time in hollywood and parasite okay those are all the nominations um Hmm. i have only seen six of the nine Mm -hmm. um so yeah, I'd I'd love to be able to say it's gonna be Parasite, and that'd be amazing for Korean cinema and uh, f- international cinema. Yeah, in general, yeah. in general. Um, but again, I can't vote on it because I haven't seen it. Yeah. Um, 1917 was groundbreaking. Uh, it was, yeah, all that filmmaking was in the prep. Mm-hmm. Um, as we've said. Uh, he'll probably get the nod for in the directing category and Roger Deakins in the uh, cinematography category. Yeah. Um, hitting me in the feels a lot more was Marriage Story. Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel that he was coming from a place of truth with that film, mm-hmm. and a lot of people are gonna uh, resonate and um, have some sort of connection to. Um. And it's just beautifully written, mm. beautifully shot, score, everything, acting, acting everything. edited. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's a gorgeous it's film. A solid film. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Joker, again, came out of nowhere, stole the show, got the most nominations. Mm-hmm. Um, 
you know, massive surprise from the filmmakers involved, as you were saying earlier, like the past films that they've done. Mm-hmm. Uh standout performance by Joaquin Phoenix but mm-hmm. I feel like they're going to get nods in their respected areas mm-hmm. I think even just them having nomination for mm-hmm. Joker in the Oscars is a, an applause enough yeah and um, the the juries the jury will probably see it that way as mm-hmm. well yeah I feel mm-hmm. like that's why they got the nom it was like fair play we got to acknowledge that you made a interesting film out of out of this yeah um but there are other films here yeah um yeah, Little Women again, as I said, like I think it was a better screenplay than a film. Mm-hmm. Even my girlfriend Summers went away and got the book um, for it because I think mm. that's where the story comes from is the the writing more mm. than seeing what's on screen. Mm. But again, great a- great adaptation by Greta Gerwig. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm torn in who I think they're going to give it to. I mm-hmm. think it could be either uh, it'd be very very lucky if this does happen but I do feel there's a sh- small chance that Joker could get it if they're feeling uh, risque risque yeah if they're feeling very <laughs> risque Joker might get it if yeah. not I think it'll probably go to 1917 um, that, however that's who I had down as who will win yeah well I've I've put it down as Joker and I've put down I want Joker but the more I think about it, the more I think 1917 is going to potentially take it i think they might back out at the last minute yeah. and be like oh do we really want to give it to a superhero film yeah. now i think if this is now the way i've done it because i want joker to win and the reason i want joker to win because the way i've tried to break it down is for me 1917 although it's brilliantly directed and put together and i enjoyed it a hell of a lot in the cinema it was like a roller coaster ride it was a real experience not just a film although all of that it's not really original no. the story that they've done is essentially saving private ryan part two mm-hmm. and even the method of stringing all the shots together um it's been done with birdman and, done with birdman um, really well and they already yeah. got a best picture for that so mm-hmm. it's like maybe not maybe they won't go and also do i re- and although i'm really impressed um and happy Did birdman take away best picture i'm 99.9 percent sure but i could be wrong it definitely won a few things um, yeah so they might not go that route because of that yeah that's what i'm thinking um, which might open up for the joker or it'll be marriage story if not yeah so i've got it down as my vote is marriage story yeah out of what i've seen uh who who will win is i've got down as 1917 yeah and then my honorary vote is joker so yeah right same rough ballpark yeah and then the reason why i put joker is because the only thing I think that's holding it back is the fact that it's called Joker, right? If you changed Arthur Fleck, um, no, sorry, if you changed Joker and just kept it as Arthur Fleck through the whole film, and called the film Arthur, called the film Arthur, and didn't and he still kept um, Tom Wayne, but didn't call him Tom Wayne, called him something else, and removed Gotham and yeah. just made it like Chicago or New York or something mm-hmm. like that, this would be up for Best Picture, and people would be still talking about it now. I think the only reason that it's lost its sort of prestige a little bit oh, it's, it's is because it's comic book yeah. and people well uh, there's still it's, we were talking about in the other one is in our last episode is like there's still that conversation and not well argument that's going on about you know um is super our superhero film cinema yeah and uh you know everyone seems to have their own two cents in in, in the matter hmm. and a lot of big shotters and big hitters have a very specific viewpoint and mm-hmm. obviously they have a lot of sway in the industry so when mm-hmm. they come out and publicly say something you know i think that could be against mm. the film and two of those people that we're talking about are, are in the oscars yeah so you know that could cause an uproar so yeah, yeah i mean it's nice that they got the no- they got the norm i think that's great mm. um but yeah i don't i don't think they'll take it home no but yeah so yeah should we leave it there then yeah. come, come back Monday um, after watching it. Yeah, just quickly, I just got a couple of other things <laughs> I wanted to mention. <clears throat> is just in some other categories, um, best production design. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't. I know you haven't seen this one yet. I want to get you to see it soon. Is Midsummer? Um, obviously, it's missed out completely, but the production design in it was very, very good. Um, so, um, 
if you know much about if you don't know much about the story Nordic and yeah it's a Swedish uh, setting um, but it takes place like in the countryside in this sort of like uh, old commune that mm. like uh, is still living as they did hundreds of years ago mm-hmm. um, and so the way they recreated all of that was stunning and um, like the, the wooden structure as an inside and how they yeah, dressed yeah. it and like the way they did it is that obviously all the the commune the people there sort of like an Amish um, sort of place they all help and build it themselves so like all the people and family paint like the walls and decorate it and they all like have stories on there and stuff like that nice. um it's very intricate yeah um, and then obviously like there's quite some big ritual scenes like where the the infamous midsummer festival where they're mm-hmm. dancing around this big pyre um yeah all the uh, the the clothes um and the furnishing that they're wearing like the flowers and the head bands and stuff like that was really really re- really well done and felt accurate and um, the other thing is that it was shot um, a lot of the film takes place in the daytime even though it's a horror film mm. which is sort of left field but it works really well you're still on the edge of your, edge of your seat you're still yeah. you know uh, scared um, so I just wanted to mention that also I noticed 1917 didn't get a nom for best editing interesting which just seems weird considering mm. like you know, the, the whole That's probably thing. why. It's because people probably question it a bit more. It's like, well, you're just stringing together one shot. You're literally <laughs> just, there's no actual cutting mm. per se. You're not you're not like redesigning a scene. It's going to be so strict. Yeah. But even in that, there is an art to it. Yeah. But I do feel like they would have looked at it in a way of we can't get that nomination. Yeah. It's like it's one continuous shot. People are going to be like, what did they edit? Yeah. Like, so yeah. yeah, I suppose. That's a good but point. No, but I didn't yeah, think of it that but way. If, yeah. uh, if obviously you know about it, mm. know about the editing, there's actually probably, you know, the same amount of work. It's mm. just more strict to... What uh, they can do, ex- yeah. Yeah, exactly, uh, you know, um, uh, what was planned in prep. Yeah. Um, there's not as much freedom, which is probably actually harder. Yeah in the editing room because it's nice to have the freedom like yeah. to be able to go oh that doesn't work yeah and chuck it can away we, and start can we get again. rid of this line yeah. let's get rid of this shot and whereas stuff, the, there they this. had to make it work yeah yeah um and then finally best visualist effects i thought dr sleep should have had a nomination oh, yes um uh, it was so gorgeous and it was so clean and there wasn't any sort of like shots where you thought oh that doesn't look quite right or that doesn't blend horror, and then horror movies always get snubbed don't yeah but then there was that one scene which we've sort of talked about a few times. Mm-hmm. Um, there's one sequence of which I'm going to kind of spoil where um, the antagonist, uh, played by Rebecca Ferguson, essentially astral projects and she travels across the globe basically to find this it is girl. Mental. It's insane, and but yeah. it looks flawless. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It looks like they actually got her up there in the in the above the yeah. stratosphere, and we had her on wires, and we're like yeah. flying her over, and we're following her with the camera. Yeah. Like it blended so well, I was in yeah. awe. And how the camera would change on its axes to like match her perspective and everything. Yes, like, very clever. So clever. Um, and then um, yeah, also with the way they presented the the mind castles of uh, the mm. the characters who have the ability to shine. Mm. Um, I thought that was really well done as well. Yes. Um, so yeah I feel like that should have got best visual effects at least I mean I know it's you know not a mm-hmm. uh, an award sweeper but for that yeah yeah so that's it cool basically that sums up right so uh, we'll wrap that up there then yeah um, literally we're gonna probably cut away and then you're probably gonna <laughs> you're gonna hear our same voices uh, in two days time yeah. after the Oscars yeah and uh, we'll uh, talk about what actually happened and what we feel about it and then yeah. a bit if more about... If we got about... anything right, if we got anything wrong. Yeah. Uh, any surprises. You know the gig. Yeah. Pong Joon Ho! This is the second Oscar tonight and the third nomination for Pong Joon Ho. Hello again. Hello. We're back for um, part two of the Oscar special. Yeah, it's been a few days. Yeah. Thanks for uh, sticking with us. <laughs> <laughs> well, for you, it'd be like not even a few seconds, but yeah, for us. Whoo. Yeah. It's been, um, been a slog. Yeah. Um, but we made it through the night. Yeah. A late one. Yeah. 
Um, and we're here to talk about the outcomes of the Oscars. Yeah, so obviously in the, the first part you've heard us go over uh, our thoughts and predictions and now we're going to go through with what actually happened. Yeah. Uh, which would be quite interesting. Yes. Uh, and it was a quite an interesting Oscars as well. It was. It surprised both of us. Yeah. Well, I think everybody yeah. has been surprised I by the I thought it was... I th- yeah, I mean, we, we thought it was going to be well, as predictable as we went in thinking with our predictions. Mm. But no, it wasn't. It wasn't as straightforward as that. No. What's really interesting is kind of almost split between... I think they call it in football like a game of two halves. Mm. It's like the common phrase um, in, in analysing. In that half of it was quite predictable it was like yeah those felt like those were going to be the um the winners and then the other half was a pleasant surprise but Mm -hmm. very much not what everyone expected no i feel like um well yeah i mean we'll we'll get into it and then we'll we'll explain all that but yeah yeah. (laughs) okay so if we just go from the top down then Mm -hmm. of the actual outcomes yep and then we can compare to what our predictions were and yep. you know give uh, our thoughts and notes on on what did happen what actually happened yeah so yeah <coughs> we'll start with best picture go on why not let's go for the big <laughs> one <laughs> whoa yeah. yeah it's just just so you can listen in and you can just bugger off now you can <laughs> you hear the big one you can go go to bed <laughs> well i'm thinking we're probably going to end up talking a lot about parasite yeah so if we, we may as well start off start off with it and then we can come back to it later on yeah uh, have some different stuff in yeah, between yeah this so, was yeah yeah this was a came left field to us and as i was going to say like a minute ago was i feel like it came left field to us is just because we haven't seen it yet yeah and that's why it wasn't in our predictions as much mm-hmm. but from what everyone's saying and from all the reviews and everything like I want to. This is the next film that I want to watch. Yeah, I mean, it's been high on our watch list anyway. Yeah. But we were sort of uh, ready and willing to happily wait for the right time to sit down and watch mm-hmm. it. After these Oscars, I want to watch it now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you same. know, I don't want to wait any longer. And I think that's a big thing for us as well because both of us um, have a, a love for um, Korean cinema, mm-hmm. especially not just yeah. in, but international um, cinema. Uh, in a big in a broader sense but yeah. um there was definitely a period in my life when i was like totally obsessed with uh korean and just asian cinema in general mm-hmm. so chinese and japanese yeah. um cinema as well so it i mean the only reason i sort of lost my strong connection with it was because there stopped being a uh, heavy stream of them coming over mm-hmm. it seemed like it, they kind of lost their hype but now it's coming back up um, which is something that we also feel like we predicted was going to happen. Yeah. Um, well, we, yeah, I mean, may as well say it now. Mm. Uh, probably our next episode now, because it, it's going to work in so well, is we've got a, a ske- uh, an, an episode scheduled mm-hmm. um, where we're going to talk about, um, you know, the, the, the rise or the, the coming rise yeah. of Asian cinema. Yeah. Um, so... Going back to um, the third episode, um, Streaming Wars, The Rise of Netflix and Disney. Mm -hmm. Uh, If you remember in that episode, we mentioned it was going to be three parts to it, but then we took one part out because it was just too much. gutted now. And we're gutted we did now (laughs) because it would have been surefire proof that uh, we're oracles in the film world. Uh, In fact, (laughs) uh, it was up on there um, up until recently, until we moved it around, but it would have said on there, um, going back east. Yeah. Yeah. uh uh the rise or the return of um asian cinema yeah and that was going to be the third part of that Mm -hmm. um and we left it out i think mainly because we hadn't seen parasite it was that that, it was that it was that and it was already a ridiculous episode as you guys will know yeah um so yeah we didn't want to have like a you know a a two two and a half hour best films Mm -hmm. and then another like two and a half three hour Mm -hmm. Like how the industry has changed, you know. Yeah, it would have been a bit too yeah, much. Yeah, people only have a, a certain amount of uh, attention span for this kind yeah. of stuff. <laughs> but I think now we have to <laughs> mention it um, before yeah. it's too late now, before we miss the boat completely. Yeah. So, uh, okay. yeah, hopefully our next scheduled episode is going to be uh, Moving Back East, uh, the return of Asian cinema. Yeah. Um, so that'll be in a few weeks' time. Yeah, 
and hopefully we'll be able to watch and review Parasite as of as well. Hopefully, uh, yeah, fingers crossed. Yeah, might have to travel to a cinema to, <laughs> to catch it. Travel to Korea, but uh, <laughs> we'll get it. We'll get it done for you. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I'm gonna do it for you, Bong Joon Ho. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I mean, uh, I think so. My prediction was that I thought 1917 might grab it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wanted. Same joker to to get it Mm -hmm. um that was just my personal preference of the films that were nominated in that category Mm -hmm. uh, the ones that i'd seen i felt that joker was the best or um had the most impact on me yeah i hadn't seen parasite so um maybe that would have changed you can't judge it yeah um and then obviously 1917 i felt like on the one hand uh sam mender deserved it for the logistical nightmare of putting 1917 together yep um you know fair play you got to take your hat off to him for mm-hmm. his directing there um and also just because i thought it was a safe bet for the for the awards for the academy yeah. i mean it is i mean it is a it is a feat in filmmaking mm-hmm. um on, on the surface people may think it's uh, a more simple approach but actually it comes with its own uh difficulties mm-hmm. it's just another form of filmmaking yeah um you know that you don't have um other areas to fall back on like you have to like they they done like i think it was like six or seven months of rehearsals so they had to get these timings perfectly right mm-hmm. and if something doesn't work in the editing room mm-hmm. tough tough shit <laughs> you, you're going through with it you've got no choice yeah so you know all the directing is in the pre-production for this yeah. um and you know he's just got to make sure it's executed visually as he wants yeah uh on the day yeah so yeah I I thought that was a surefire. Yeah. So winner as well. Pleasant surprise though that Parasite did take Definitely. it, uh, and it opens up now, uh, f- in for the future for more international films mm-hmm. to get more recognition, on the same level as yep. uh, Western productions. Yeah, definitely. Um. So yeah, awesome. Uh, now on to best director. Mhm. Uh, again, we thought Sam, Sam Mendes. Yeah. Um. And again, it's because we haven't seen <laughs> Parasite. Yeah. Um, and usually Best Picture and Best Director normally sort of go, go hand, hand in hand. hand. Yeah. yeah. So, so that was like a big, big nod to... Mm. Uh, they were the, the Oscars were so clever. We were saying this earlier. They were so clever in the way that they designed their night. Mm-hmm. was like, you know, the first uh, the first award was uh, given out to support an actor and mm-hmm. made you think go in one way. Mm. And then you're like, oh, they're going to take it. That's their night. Then they'd go over and then they start giving awards to another film. You're like, oh... Hang on a minute. Yeah. And they bounced you around perfectly until you yeah. got, you know, the two top tier films um, basically waiting to see who's won mm-hmm. for Best Picture. Going head to head. Yeah. yeah. Really, really well. Um, yeah, we were saying that it's almost like um, the producers of the os- Oscars, the Academies, um, put on the show themselves and yeah. in, in that they structured it like a, st- like a film, like a yeah, story. It really and was. kept you on the edge of your seat. Yeah, it was brilliant. Uh, yeah. So um, congrats to uh, Bong Joon-ho for um, picking up. Mm-hmm. Uh, best director which obviously sounds like it was to be well honest, deserved yeah to be honest all the films of his that I've seen not one bad egg yeah. they're all great very consistent mm-hmm. it's about time he got um, a nod from somewhere yeah mm-hmm. so uh, on to the next one uh, best actor this one was the first one we got right yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, obviously it went to Joaquin Phoenix yeah um, very much deserved there I think it was probably expecting too much to to, to have the the Joker um, bag some bigger awards. I think the ones the categories that it did end up winning in were the ones the ones that we wanted. And we wanted we, and it deserved to. Yeah, I think yeah we said I think, I think we said this earlier anyway. Argument. Yeah, I think mm. we said this earlier anyway. Is like, um, you know, uh, Todd Phillips getting a nod for best director, um, best screenplay as well, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, adapted yeah. screenplay. Yeah. Um, and you got best score. Uh, costume makeup like they they came in and they had the most nominations out of all films yeah that is already a win yeah. like in itself mm-hmm. so they've came in they've done what they needed to yeah and i think they did select the two categories that deserved it yeah. over over most yeah um and uh not to get into the the comic wars debate too much but <laughs> um i think now is the time that people sort of put their um their weapons down uh, and i'm talking about in terms of dc versus marvel and um on a bigger level superhero versus the rest of cinema mm-hmm. do you know what i mean 
they're all forms of entertainment. They're all different storylines. I think you can arg- argue that non-superhero films have characters which have hero-like qualities anyway, and the villains in some of those films <coughs> come across like super villains anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, so, in reality, they're a lot closer than they think. It's just that obviously with the, the you know the comic themed films, they're more on the nose about the archetypes, whereas in other f- you know general cinema, it's more sub subtext subplot. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, and that was another thing we were saying about the whole of the awards. It really feels like it's changed the game now, where even last year it felt like um, a bit of like um, a prestige uh, tension between yeah. different filmmakers and different types of films. This mm-hmm. one finally sort of put everybody on the same level, made them all feel included. Yeah. So no matter well, whether it was foreign or uh, domestic yeah. or if it was superhero or more highbrow drama, mm-hmm. everybody... Well, we, yeah, we've been hinting that you know throughout the past few episodes um that uh it seems that a lot of filmmakers of the higher regard are making films about hollywood or about filmmaking or uh, mm-hmm. you know uh about what they do basically or you know and it was almost like the oscars were like sit down be humble mm. <laughs> <laughs> and and yeah. and kind of like laid it out and I th- and it was kind of uh i mean our prediction obviously um you know it was it was nice to see well it's like we predict we predicted that there was going to be this ongoing battle yeah and we weren't sure how what the outcome was going to be but i think the oscars has sort of like settled it settled it um in that it's you know put the weapons well, yeah, you've, down you've got you both you both yeah. have um areas to contribute to yeah i mean you got <coughs> films that are made specifically about hollywood you got uh filmmakers who are giants in hollywood Mm. and then they threw all of their cards in the bag of a korean director and a korean uh language film Mm -hmm. and it was really nice to see it was uh, they took chucked it to an original film instead of Mm -hmm. you know something that we've seen before Mm -hmm. essentially yeah um and and it was nice to see that hollywood were um the academy wasn't going to toot their own horn Mm. Um, and this is the thing i'm really excited to see parasite and i wish i made more of an effort before the awards to watch it now mm -hmm. because i'm realizing it is out of all of those films that is probably the most original as in like um 1917 you could say is a mod an an updated version of saving private ryan for this today's uh, audience it's the birdman twist of saving private ryan yeah yeah Yeah. exactly they've just taken saving private ryan and done it in one long shot Mm. um marriage story you could say is almost like Kramer versus Kramer. Um, the, I think it's 1980s, um, uh, you know, uh, marriage uh, film, mm. uh, relationship film. Uh, the Irishman, again, is just really Goodfellas, Casino. Gangster flick. Gangster, th- this year's gangster flick. Um, yeah, and then Once Upon a Time was this year's Hollywood film, mm-hmm. film about Hollywood. Mm-hmm. So by the sounds of it, Parasite was the one that had the most new uh yeah. interesting things to say that yeah. hadn't been seen or done before mm-hmm. um so yeah definitely going back to uh <coughs> Joaquin phoenix as well mm-hmm. he was uh in his speech uh laid down some uh hurtful truths mm-hmm. um which i hope he continues to do um because yeah. he is a you know um uh an activist uh in many areas yeah and uh, i'm glad that he's one of there's a there's a few more there's a few more um people with platforms coming out and speaking mm-hmm. but i'm glad that he's using these big moments where they're televised to millions um to say the stuff that not a lot of people want to say and that mm. most people don't want to hear mm-hmm. um so yeah it was it was nice and to he does it in a way which is um palatable and yes. digestible you know he doesn't come across mm-hmm. as condescending or no. preachy so that's nice and that's yeah yeah so yeah, well done to Joaquin Phoenix. Um, yeah, he was our guest to win, and he did, mm-hmm. and I think yeah, well deserved. Um, so next, uh, I'm going to do best supporting actor. Uh, so I got this wrong. I predicted uh, Al Pacino. Same, Al Pacino. Um, I can see, I can, I, I can see why they went for Brad Pitt. Mm. Um, I mean, I think <sighs> this is what we were saying earlier is they he came out first which was surprising the mm-hmm. first award is the supporting actor yeah 
uh, to be honest, I thought that I'd missed half the ceremony. <laughs> <laughs> and I was really worried. I was like, no. Um, but no. Um, yeah, I feel like... Yeah, I don't know. To be honest, like if you if you actually look at all the support and actors on face value, mm-hmm. there's not that much difference. I feel like what they did was they went, well, Al Pacino's got his nods. Um, yeah. Uh, Joe Pesci's got his award, and last time he got the award, he just said two words and he yeah. said "my pleasure" and walked <laughs> off. Yeah. So <laughs> they were like, "Yeah, he didn't even thank us." So yeah. we'll give him the nod, and then you know. yeah. Um, and also, like we were saying, uh, we knew they couldn't leave. Um, tarantino out in some way exactly and And even even if it's not uh even if it's to uh, an actor award Mm -hmm. that's still a nod to the film yeah um because at the end of the day it's been the character was written by especially uh, yeah especially a tarantino film yeah when you give him best uh best actor or best supporting actor you are respecting tarantino himself because he has he's so hands-on with actors Mm -hmm. in his directing style and because he writ the script and it's dialogue heavy and mm-hmm. a lot of it comes from him so yeah, yeah definitely and i also think it was well that was a that was a smart move on the oscars as we were saying with um how they directed the night mm-hmm. was the first one to come out was to win an award was once upon a time in hollywood mm-hmm. and that was their only no 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 no, no. they got a uh, production design yes they did, yeah. um but yeah that was the first one and we were like ah oh, and I think they they'd done that because it was almost like they were playing into uh, like everyone's idea of what the Oscars was gonna, gonna be. be about. Yeah. So everyone was like, "Yep, yeah, Once Upon a Time is gonna win. They're gonna get best pit, their best mm. picture. They're gonna do this. Gonna do that because mm. it's got Hollywood in the name." Mm-hmm. And I feel like that was us. They're like mm. very clever they were way of going. Us. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah. Um, yeah. Very very clever. Yeah. Uh, then on to uh, best actress. Mm-hmm. Now. Um, I got it wrong. I and I s- actually still stand by this, but again, I haven't seen Judy, so yeah. I mean, I could have my mind completely changed. Yeah. But I'm until then, <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm gonna stick by. I think. Uh, Is it um, Scarlett? Uh, yeah, Scarlett Johansson. Yeah. Um, yeah, I predicted Judy, but just because I feel like I know the Academy Awards so well, I knew they were gonna go for this because it's Renee Zellweger, uh, you know, a big Hollywood actress playing mm-hmm. an even bigger ex-Hollywood actress Judy Garland mm-hmm. in a film about Hollywood. I just... Well, didn't you say as well that uh, Judy Garland's family were one of the ones where they've all won Oscars yeah, or something? Yeah, she's the only one. Th- their family is the only one where... And she's the only one The mother, didn't. father and the the daughter have won. And she each. didn't? No, no, she did. Oh, okay, and then cool. uh, Liza Minnelli and Vincent Minnelli did. So all three of them, their wow. um yeah, so family. Keep, keep it in the family. Keep it in the family. So again, I feel like that was a throwback to that mm-hmm. of them sort of going full circle. Is there a scene in the film as well where she's at the Oscars? Is I don't know, but that would it make looks, sense. It, it yeah. looks like it, doesn't it? Yeah. There's that stage when she that uh, the line I'm guessing is like a really important line in the film yeah. where she says like, uh, "You won't forget me, will you?" or something like that. And then uh, it that looks, must be it, from. It looks like she's Oscar on like win, a, yeah. It looks like, or like a performance that she did at the Oscars or something. That's what mm. it looks like anyway, or like a BAFTA or yeah. Golden Globe or something. But it looks like that kind of stage. Yeah. So, yeah, um, I, that's why I put her. Um, if I was being completely um, uh, subjective about it, I'd probably agree with you in that Scarlett Johansson, out of the films that I saw, mm-hmm. gave the best um, yeah. leading act- uh, actress performance for me. Yeah. Out of the ones I saw, yeah. Uh, next, best supporting actress, Laura Dern. Laura Dern. <laughs> yeah, we got it right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely deserved. Yeah, I think um, there's just no question there. There was no, no competition this year. Not um, at all. She just nailed it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not else, much else more <laughs> no. to that. Well done, no. Laura Dern. Yeah. Um, uh, another side side point is, isn't it funny how we're like two years since the Last Jedi? And two of the, like the main complaints about that film have sort of um, the people behind them. One was obviously Ryan Johnson and his direction of the the film series, and Laura Dern, and Laura Dern's <laughs> character and what her role represented in the film. Yeah, both of those two people have gone away, sort of taken that abuse on the chin and come back yeah. and just like shut everybody up. Yeah. Um, Ryan Johnson with Knives Out. And obviously Laura Dern with her amazing performances this year, mm-hmm. uh, most notably yeah, in Marriage Story. Yeah, performances. Yeah, mm. yeah, Little Women as well. Yeah. 
So what then, Laura Dern? Uh, who I used to have a crush on as a young boy watching Jurassic Park. Just throwing that out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird how, like, yeah. <laughs> Don't have a crush on her anymore, but, well, I do, but more for her uh, uh, acting talent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, then on to best original screenplay. Mm. I had Noah Baumbach down for this. Mm-hmm. Um, again, haven't seen Parasite, so mm-hmm. uh, can't judge. Mm-hmm. Um, but just from what I'd seen in those categories, mm-hmm. I just felt like the um, and from what I've I've looked at the behind the behind the scenes as well. I think I said this earlier in uh, from what you listened to earlier as well. Mm-hmm. Um, is just from what I've seen and the way the cast and everyone reacted to his screenplay. I just mm-hmm. feel like it probably sung something that not a lot of them did. Yeah. And the way that the actors responded, I feel like it was just a really nice marriage between script and directing. Mm-hmm. Think? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, I had Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and I put that down because... We thought that was going to be the nod. Yeah. I felt I, like I thought that that was the one I put down to as I was like surefire mm. Oscar's gonna take it like mm. they're gonna go yeah thank you Quinton thanks yeah. for putting Hollywood in the name yeah thanks Here's for your nod making us look really good mm-hmm. in the film yeah yeah here you go um I didn't really consider who I would have given it to um probably yeah marriage story out of the ones I've seen so yeah interesting marriage story feels like it kind of got lost out this year uh apart from obviously laura Dern, but there's no question about that but in mm-hmm. other every other category yeah but yeah also i'll, I'll go through a, a few more uh oscar records later on mm. but um for this one as well uh parasite was the uh first non- non-english language film to win original screenplay so yeah there's been quite a few records so mm. stick around for later i'll list a few off nice um so yeah uh well done again for parasite which mm-hmm. makes sense um when you consider it one best picture and best director mm-hmm. kind of had to it would yeah yeah so um on to the next one best adapted screenplay just going back quickly that was written by parasite is written by bong jun ho and han jin won yes just to check names in there yeah <laughs> I, actually i've got a little bit about that um so yeah uh just because you've mentioned it, uh, it's been in development since 2013 on the set of Snowpiercer. No. Um, way. Yeah. Uh, uh, an actor talked to him and saying, "Oh, you should do a stage play." Was saying to Bong Joon Ho, and he was like, "Oh, okay." And um, he told him about how he'd been working as uh, an English tutor for a, a Korean family mm. in his, you know, in between acting, and that obviously. Um, no way. Gave who, Bong who was that? A, an idea. I can't remember the name of the actor who it was but mm. someone on the set i don't think it was one of the main actors or anything not english well they were english uh no no they weren't english i mean english language uh, actor uh i don't know but i'm assuming it was um a korean awesome. um uh because That's obviously they cool. mentioned about the english tutoring it is interesting where these stories come from sometimes like yeah. it, all it all it takes is you know you can have like a massive dry spell of just nothing original nothing you know, great sparking off in your head, and then all it takes is just one small conversation or experience one little thing or something, and then all of a sudden, a, like fireworks go off, and you're like, yeah, yeah, obviously, yeah, that's what I need to do. And then, um, so following on from that, he wrote a 15-page treatment, which was uh, the first half of the film. No way. Yeah, and then he went away and obviously worked on other things, and the co-writer that you mentioned. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bong Joon-ho gave it, set it off to him and he did three drafts of it and then when Bong Joon-ho was free enough again he came back Sick. on and did rewrites and then that's the final film that we got and obviously they both got and writing that credits that is time management <laughs> right yeah that is juggling <laughs> yeah yeah so six years in the making um, quality uh, uh, going back adapted. so we were talking about adapted screenplay weren't we mm-hmm, just yeah. about two years yeah so uh, yeah, I got this one right. Um, I put Taika Waititi for Jojo Rabbit. Um, I didn't. It's funny actually because I put it after talking to you like last week, I think. Um, and uh, we were going over all the other some, previous awards yeah, and stuff. Yeah, and um, yeah, I think 
just because of the subject matter and um other things like that i felt like the irishman while probably a good adaption of the source material wasn't like anything new or divisive enough mm-hmm. um and then obviously with jojo rabbit it is kind of that subject matter which is something that the academies usually look for as a um, as a reason to to give an award mm-hmm. and that was a thing that stood out for me i thought maybe he could get it for that yeah and plus he took it in a few others as well bafta he did yeah a few other places as well yeah but yeah so it was kind of like they were setting it up for him almost mm-hmm. as someone to look out for but something worth mentioning as was it the round table oh uh, uh talk? hollywood reporter round table yeah the right writers. yeah do you want to talk a little bit about that about Taika Waititi? Because <laughs> I think uh, this is interesting. Because yeah, he yeah he uh, it's kind of what we were talking about this earlier. Basically saying like, is it actually an adapted screenplay for one? Mm-hmm. Because the book is more of a drama, mm-hmm. um, and he's added multiple characters, changed the story, turned it into a more of a a, a, comic, a comedy. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, we was talking about that, and then also is that he's never read a script, mm-hmm. supposedly. <laughs> supposedly, which I find that really hard to believe. Yeah, but. I don't know if he. It's very difficult sometimes mm. to understand if he's joking or not. Mm. Um, he's very um, yeah, dry witted. Mm. That typical um, New Zealand <laughs> sort of humour, <laughs> which is yeah. it's good, but I do feel like okay, sometimes sometimes can you switch it off? Yeah, yeah, yeah you know. <laughs> Yeah, um, and I find it sometimes a little bit difficult sometimes to find out whether he's hide, hiding being rude under the uh, jokes. Mm. Um, but yeah, he's an interesting guy anyway. Yeah. Like, clearly talented. Um, but anyway, with the writing, he was saying about, you know, he's uh, doesn't really read and he doesn't care for structure. Mm-hmm. He just writes in whatever way. He I don't know, he didn't specify what way, mm. but he just basically writes out the script and then gives it to someone to put it into format. Mm. <laughs> so it's like Yeah. Which is I mean, not to take away from him, I haven't seen the film. It looks no. good, it looks interesting, but it looks like a film that I have to be in the mind frame for to yeah. sit down and watch. It's not something I could put on at any time. Mm-hmm. Um but reason, you know, I think it's an interesting story is I mean, well one, first of all, is it a, a proper adaption? When, if it's not, then it means that actually that, that's a, that's the more loose term then, adapted. It's more, it mm-hmm. could be best inspired screenplay, best homage screenplay, mm-hmm. do you know what I mean? Which is fine, but you need to be a bit clearer. Um, but also, I think it's a good thing in that it says to people that you don't have to, you know, technically be technical minded or go to university and do all the supposed Mm-hmm. Um, things that you have to do to be a filmmaker you know mm-hmm. and be completely by the book i think maybe his way of saying like oh you know i just do whatever i want is maybe a bit too far you yeah. know there's a reason that these there's structures in place yeah this stuff doesn't just happen to you no no but um but i do think it's encouraging in saying to people that you know you don't have to be the most academic or technical minded you could still um and then that was part of his speech as well but he, he focused it more on the fact that he was a native mm-hmm. indigenous uh, person and that's his background and he said you know this is for everyone this is for everyone who yeah um well yeah i'm <coughs> i'm a firm believer in you know college and uni kind of gets you so far i feel mm. like the further you go is just you trying to understand if you have a passion for film you staying in education is you finding out where you fit um mm. and keeping those connections and using um um you know uh sorry my phone's gone off um <laughs> using um the tools and everything that they have in in uh colleges and universities mm. um but the best film school is on a film set mm. that's where you are forced into a mindset to learn adapt and fail and that's the big part of it is like you know you need to go and learn for yourself instead of having someone else with their own opinion telling you what to do and what not to do mm. Uh, that only gets you so far Mm -hmm. um and as soon as you learn the basics and the rules you go off and you break those rules yeah (laughs) i think that's the way uh in which you should go so yeah i I definitely agree like there is there's some kind of uh inspiration behind what he says with 
I don't have a structure. Yeah. That's great. Um, and there are a few other scripts as well that don't have a traditional structure. Mm. Uh, like one of the most recent famous ones is A Quiet Place, mm-hmm. um, where that full feature originally was like 30, 40 pages, something like that. <laughs> got rejected everywhere obviously because they were like it's a short film yeah what are you doing go home yeah um <laughs> so they ended up just putting like three words on a page going like uh they step on the floor and there's just like big letters going down the page going creak creak <laughs> creak <laughs> just to fill up the page and yeah. but it but built atmosphere and they put like maps in the of the like barn and the farm and mm-hmm. all this kind of stuff in the script so and that was one of the breakout films yeah. of that year yeah huge so and put john krasinski on the map for directing as well yeah. so and they've already pushed out a sequel which is coming mm-hmm. out this year that's yeah. a fast turnaround mm-hmm. you know which shows what can be done yeah um you know so yeah definitely i think yeah there, there's there's definitely a um you know do's and don'ts uh yeah. you need to understand structure yeah um but doesn't mean that you have to follow it the same way you need to know how a camera works mm-hmm. but then you can go away and you can experiment experiment with it and yeah, innovate. push. Th- yeah, exactly. Yeah, agreed. Okay, and best original score for Hilda Goodna de Tier. Yes, <laughs> I've been saying that over and over in my head for the past like twenty minutes. Like, okay, I gotta nail this. Yeah, yeah we uh, we <laughs> I think uh, as you probably heard earlier. Um, we just called her Hilda, and I think it's uh, fair to say that she deserves to have her full name mentioned in full, because mm-hmm. um, she is brilliant, and I'm sure that she's going to do tremendous work in the future. Mm. I'm looking forward to whatever she does. Yeah, um, yeah, well deserved. I think she, yeah, she had to take that one away. To be honest, mm-hmm. um, yeah, none of none of the scores hit as deeply as that one did, and was no. so entwined in the storyline as well. Mm-hmm. And yeah, yeah, incredible. And lastly, best cinematographer, another one we got right. Deakins. Roger Deakins never yeah. lets us down, does he? No. Yeah. Uh, he's got some. I don't want to quote it, but he's got quite a lot of dominations, and this is his <laughs> second win, with his first win being Blade Runner twenty forty nine. Um. Nice. So yeah. Anyway, massively well deserved for 1917. If it was going to take it away, anything it was guaranteed cinematography. Yeah. Although, we do feel like there was another film that got completely overlooked in that area. Well, not completely, but was possi- should have possibly been another series yeah, contender. Th- Although again, I haven't seen it, mm-hmm. so I can't. But just from. Uh, from a filmmaking standpoint, filmmaking yeah. point of view. But again, even even uh, a nod to a nomination in these in these massive awards is yeah. a huge thing, anyway. To be fair, yeah. Um, so that film's a lighthouse, mm-hmm. by the way, that I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, with Willem Dafoe and Robert Pattinson. Yeah. So yeah, so that sums up our list. Um, a mixed bag, like we said, we got about half right, half mm-hmm. wrong. Um, yeah. No, it was, a, it was a really interesting Oscars, actually. Um, and as I was saying earlier, there was a lot of uh, record-breaking uh, events mm. uh, that that happened. Uh, so I'll just list a few off here. So as I said earlier, Parasite became the first non-English language film to win Best Picture uh, and also uh, Best Original Screenplay. Mm-hmm. So already ridiculous. Also, they matched... Uh, Walt Disney's uh, four Oscar win in one ceremony as well so another one they're just breaking it all was that for um, I'm not too sure it was like uh, that famous film what's it called Disney one with um, Mickey Mouse and he's dressed up like a wizard and maybe yeah I actually watched this at uni Anyway, keep going. I'll try and find it. Um, and then uh, Martin Scorsese, even though he didn't win, he actually broke um, uh, a record um, just through Fantasia. Getting Fantasia, yeah, yeah of yeah. course. Oh, yeah, I love Fantasia. Yeah. <laughs> That's um, the one with all the music c- uh, composing and the visuals to the yes. composition, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's gorgeous. Um, 
Yeah, so Martin Scorsese has the most nominations for a living person in the directing category with nine nominations in four. Um, but uh, obviously that's living person. But then mm-hmm. there's uh, William Wyler, who died in 1981, and he holds the most Best Director nods with overall at 12. Whew. Yeah. Um, and then there's John Williams, uh, remains the most nominated living person with now 52 <laughs> nominations. <laughs> that is ridiculous. But um, wow. he is still behind uh, Walt Disney, who has 59 nominations. Jeez. Yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah. Streaming wars, the rise of Netflix <laughs> and Disney. I mean... Yeah. That's it. Uh, that's it right there. Disney um, is literally uh, the real-life Palpatine, isn't it? Mm. Just ruling from behind the scenes <laughs> all these years. Yeah. Crazy. Um... And then uh, another one from uh, Hilda Guthner Dottier. Mm-hmm. Nice. I think I got that right. Yeah. Um, she becomes the first is- Icelandic Oscar winner for her composition on Joker. Congrats. Which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and then there was also the first female um, conductor as well at the Oscars, mm-hmm. which was uh, Ima, Ima Noon. Um, who is a uh, of Irish descent, and obviously as well, uh, Brad Pitt won his first Oscar. Yeah, congrats! <laughs> 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 like, just put that one at the end. It's kind of uh, not as much on the other ones, but uh, had to go in there just in case you didn't know. Yeah. So, yeah, all in all, um, a very interesting year. Mm-hmm. Um, opens up. Uh, the doors for a potentially very different Oscar next year, or well, similar to this year, but mm. you know, different going forward. In that, it might be a bit more yes. open across the board. I'm hoping so. Which well, means hopefully more international productions yeah, might try. Well, well, that's the other thing as well. The pushing their films over um, here. Category for now international film. Yeah. This is his first year being under the title of international film, yeah. where before it was foreign. Foreign film. language. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's again another huge. Um, step up in the industry yeah hopefully soon it'll all just be one thing but yeah awesome um sorry just looking through our notes uh another thing that's probably worth mentioning is it's been a really big year for um parasite actually and this completely slipped my mind was that it won the palm door at Cannes mm. uh last year which is in it's may it's one of the f- First, right or second to ever do that? Uh, it's one of the first with a unanimous decision. Uh, so the only film uh, uh, other than that was, or the most recent was uh, Blue is the Warmest Color in 2013, which is the same year that uh, Bong Joon Ho got the idea to do Parasites. It's a bit wow. weird when you think about That's it. That's cool. So yeah, it took him six years, and he's like, ah, I'm gonna get that title as well. <laughs> um, yeah, and it's grossed one hundred and sixty-seven point six million dollar uh, dollars worldwide. Wow. Yeah. So a small, um, uh, dramedy. It's basically or uh, black comedy drama thriller, um, from Korea, <laughs> is making big budget, uh, Hollywood film numbers, which is exciting. And yeah, comparis- in comparison, it only cost eleven million to make so it's done 10 times its budget already and it's probably gonna and it's getting a re-release now isn't it in black and white and i'm sure it's gonna open up in more cinemas because of the success it's had at the oscars so that's gonna skyrocket they'll push it definitely so yeah uh so yeah um another thing i just wanted to um squeeze in was we missed out on birds of prey uh our review oh, episode oh yeah um kind of gutted we forgot to mention it but just because we've obviously been talking about um going back to past episodes and how we've sort of been predicting things and stuff mm-hmm. another little thing we predicted that was in birds of prey which surprised well there was two things um one thing was uh so uh, as you may or may not know, um, we've been working on a little passion side project, mm-hmm. um, which is uh, a Harley uh, short film. Titled Harley. Titled Harley, yeah. And um, in putting together uh, that, 
we came up with like a playlist and one of the songs um, which featured on it is uh, Love Roller Coaster, which I was shocked to hear in Birds of Prey mm-hmm. uh, yesterday when we went to the cinema to watch it. Yeah. Um, or the day before yesterday, mm-hmm. sorry. Um, in quite a extended little scene. So if you're watching it, it's after um, the prison fight where Harley has to break someone out. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if you keep a listen out uh, while they're on their getaway, uh, it's playing on the radio or it's playing as um yeah as uh off screen music and then it features into the scene on the radio so that kind of like threw us back and then there was also another thing which popped up twice yeah in the film which was uh when i wrote the um short film like two three years ago around the suicide squad um around that hype before i went to watch it um <laughs> and then put the script on the shelf um I was doing loads of research into what kind of origin story to do for Harley. Mm. And the one prominent one was the uh, Suicide Squad origins. Yeah. And uh, in that, there features um, a beaver, <laughs> which pops up quite a bit, actually, in um, Birds of Prey. Mm-hmm. And uh, we wrote in, uh, well, I wrote in the, the beaver to be in uh, our short film and will still be in the short film. Mm-hmm. Um and basically it just hints a, a past relationship that she had in high school with a, um, again, a serial killer. She likes to attract them. Um, and he was into taxidermy and he taxidermied a, a beaver and mm-hmm. gave it to her as a present. And now she takes it with her wherever she goes mm. um, and not doesn't normally explain exactly what it is or no. where she got it from. Yeah. Um, which, again, happens in the, in in the, the film. film as well. Yeah. Uh, it's like so it's in the in her apartment in the background of a couple of uh scenes and then in one scene it's like the camera focus on it and then later on in the film they even talk about it one of the character picks it up and asks what it yeah. is and she kind of doesn't explain no yeah does explain in in typical harley fashion yeah um gives her a roundabout sort of answer mm-hmm. um but it was interesting that they picked up on something uh, which is obviously important to her backstory, but not something that's been featured much. Well, so minute. Yeah, but yeah. they clearly wanted to make a thing out of it. Um, yeah. So yeah, quite funny. another interesting pre- premonition yeah. that came to pass. So yeah, so uh, definitely keep an ear out for news on that and everything else that we're working on. Uh, we got loads coming up, whether it be through distributing, yeah. um, or our own productions. Um, so yeah, so I mean, follow us up um, mm-hmm. both individually and mainly Studio Seven. Um, yeah. So um, yeah, on Instagram it's at Studio Seven Films. Dot co. Dot uk. Yeah. Uh, you're at Joshy Lee. Um, at Luciano Piero D'Amato. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we've also got the Studio Seven podcast um, available to to watch on YouTube. Um, as well as being on all the major streaming podcast platforms. Yeah, so Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, uh, Anchor, blah, 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 yeah. all of them. <laughs> yeah, and um, if you also want to like see some of our past stuff so you can measure what we're talking about and think, okay, so, yeah, I can... Um, who are these guys? Who what are these do? guys, yeah. What do they do? What do they do? <laughs> Is what they're saying worth me listening to? Well... Uh, have a look on Amazon Prime um, for our past um, short films mm-hmm. uh, with more to be added soon as yep. well as films by the people that we're distributing. Yeah. So, what I think that day. about sums it up. Yeah. Yeah. Another solid episode. Yeah. Thanks for listening, guys. Yeah. Thanks for your patience. We'll see you again soon. Yeah. For the uh, possible Korean episode. Yeah. And cool. Parasite Review. Yeah. Cool. Cheers, guys. All the best. Take care. Bye bye. Uh, thank you. I, I will drink until next morning. Thank you. Uh.